I'm Erica Rascon. Thank you for joining me. Let's start off this practice in a seated position with your ankles or shins crossed. And you might place your fingertips or hands on the floor on either side of your hips. Allow your shoulders to roll up and back and then let them relax. You might choose to close your eyes or soften your gaze here. And start by bringing your awareness to all the parts of your body that are now making contact with the floor. Perhaps pressing the hands or fingertips down firmly and then softening that tension. Noticing the weight distribution between the left and right hemispheres of your body, finding a bit of balance in both glutes. You might also notice the edges of the feet, outer edges of the legs, and let yourself feel anchored in the seat. Good. We're now going to take three cleansing breaths, breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth. So let's exhale collectively here, and then inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth, twice more at your own pace. Turn back into your normal breathing pattern and just notice how your body has showed up today. Take a moment to thank yourself for being here, to thank your body for cooperating to the degree that it has. Good. We are now going to allow ourselves to set an intention or a dedication for your practice today. And I recommend setting an intention or dedication that involves your community involvement and your advocacy for your community. Take about three to five breaths to set an intention or a dedication here. Final breath, and then take both hands, place them over the center of your heart, and just sort of imagine that you are sealing in that intention or dedication that you've set. We'll take a big breath in through the nose and out through the nose to seal it in. And then blink open your eyes if you've closed them. We're going to change the cross of the leg so that the opposite shin is in front. And we are going to go through a couple of flowing sequences, one movement moving effortlessly into the other. We're doing this for today's class to help illustrate physically how our actions can have a ripple effect in our community and how each of us are a bit interdependent upon one another, even in very subtle ways, right? So we're going to demonstrate that through flow today. We're going to start off with a lateral flow. So let's place our left hand down on the mat and lift the right arm up. As you exhale, let that right arm drape down and forward, swinging your torso forward as you come up onto the other side, mirror image. Let's do that again. Exhale, let it sweep forward. Inhale, up on the left. Exhale, sweep the right arm forward. Inhale as you lean towards the right. Good. Start to move as quickly or as slowly as you would like. Just sort of noticing that this is going to vary in everyone's bodies. You may want more speed, more tapas, <laughs> heat building, or you may want to take this nice and slow. We'll be here for about three to five breath cycles more. Really allow 
allow the extended arm to stretch to its full capacity, giving you a nice side stretch, starting to open the shoulders. About two more breath cycles here. Good. And the next time that that pendulum swings towards your left side, you're going to hold there on the left. Letting your right arm extend overhead, maybe even bending into that right elbow and holding on to your head, using it as a little extra weight. Take a few breaths here, supporting yourself with that bottom arm in any way that feels good to you. And then we'll take that right into the other side. Maybe the arm remains straight. You might bend the elbow, use your head as a little extra weight to take you deeper into that side bend. Practice your breath here. Good, final breath. And let's inhale to bring ourselves back towards center, placing the hands on the knees or the thighs for a few rounds of seated cat and cow. As you inhale, tilt the pelvis forward, lift the chest, lift the chin. And then as you exhale, tilt the pelvis back, curve the spine, chin to chest. Good, again, inhale, lift. And exhale, curl it in. Beautiful. A few more times just like this, moving at your own pace honoring the speed that your body wants today the intensity that your body wants and linking these movements together effortlessly right try to let it flow let the movement originate in the pelvis and then travel up towards the cervical spine beautiful let's do twice more here if you're moving at my pace Good. And the next time that you exhale, find a neutral position for your spine. We're going to take both of our ankles towards the left. And then your left thigh. We want to play around with that angle in a way that works best for you. But what we're aiming for is to have as much length in the left hip flexor as we can. So try to take that thigh as far out as possible, okay? We're going to stack our hands like genies. <laughs> And as you exhale, twist towards your left. Inhale, twist to the right. Exhale, twist to the left. And inhale to the right. If this is good for you, stay here. You're also welcome to take your hands to the floor outside of your right thigh and fold forward, which may give you a bit more sensation and that left hip flexor and left thigh all right pick the variation that feels best for you and give yourself about three or four more repetitions here moving at your own pace allow the hip to move Allow your left sit bone to drop down as you twist towards your left. And really lengthen out the thigh as you twist towards the right. Final time if you're moving at my pace. And then we're gonna make our way back up towards center. Change the legs. Again, looking for as much length as you can get in your right thigh and right hip flexor this time. We're gonna exhale as we twist to the right. Inhale to the left and the variation that feels best to you. Based on how quickly you're moving, we're aiming for five to 10 repetitions. Good. If you're moving at my pace, we have two more. And 
And as we inhale, we'll come back to center. And we're going to come into a tabletop or hands and knees pose facing the long edge of your mat. So you want to give yourself as much space side to side as you can. So starting off in tabletop position, we're going to extend the left leg out towards the left. Make sure that the arch of your left foot is in line with your right knee. And then come on up to kneel on that right knee. We're going to pass through gate pose, Paragasana and an alternation, okay? So let's start off with a nice big inhale as you lean your body towards the left. And then as you exhale, place your right hand on the floor and take your left arm overhead. Long stretch, good. Inhale to lift. And exhale to lower. If your balance feels a bit off, press the pinky edge of your left foot down into the floor and keep your hips shifting forward so they stay stacked over that right knee rather than your hips and tailbone jutting out behind you, okay? Good, about three more times here if you're moving at my pace. Two more. Try to move as gracefully as you can, not for aesthetics, but because that means you're using core control, right? Rather than momentum. Last one. Good, let both hands come down to the floor. Find your tabletop position again. And we're going to take the right leg out towards the right. Arch lining up with left knee, come into kneeling. Same thing, other side. Every movement linking to another and linking gracefully based on the strength of your core, which I find to be really interesting in a class about, you know, advocating for the community, right? Because it's those core values that link us together. And the strength of those core values and the strength of our link is what's going to help things become a bit more fluid and easeful in our communities. Something to think about. <laughs> Two more if you're flowing at my speed. Keep pressing the hips forward like you are squeezed between two panes of glass. Good. And then make your way back into that tabletop position. Let's go right back into our setup for gate pose, but there's a little bit of a switch here. So we have our left ankle lined up with the right knee. We're going to take our right hand and bring it to the mat outside of the right knee. So you're coming almost back into this side plank variation. Now we're going to lift the left leg and let it hover, keeping the ankle roughly in line with the hip. Hold here for five, four, three, two, one, Kapanjalasana, which is a phrase I don't use often, but that means taking your uh, right hand to your right ankle and taking the back bend, sending your chest and your heart forward as your head leans back. Take a few breaths here, just kind of feeling into the pose, getting into the hips, the thigh, and then let's flow. Inhale to extend the arm and leg. Exhale, bend the knee, take the hand back to the ankle. Good, inhale, arm and leg, nice and straight. Exhale into the back bend. Beautiful, three more. You might feel that sensation in the outer hip. Welcome it, savor it, it's making you stronger. If the balance is challenging, you might look down to the floor, find a little focal point that's not gonna move. Good. Let your foot rest down on the ground for stability and start to transition sides. We'll all meet up in the side plank variation using a nice big inhalation, get long and strong. Leg lifted. <laughs> and then as you exhale, bend the knee, reach it back. A few breaths here. 
feel into the pose with your body. See where your range of motion is now before we start to flow. Inhale for length. Exhale. Inhale for length. Good. Exhale. This pose translates into something like Catham Bird Pose, which makes me very curious about what this bird looks like. Final repetition here. Long and strong in the arms. Lifted chest, open heart in the back bend. Good. Find some stability <laughs> in the floor. And now let's turn towards the short edge of our mat. Finding a tabletop position with your legs towards the midline, wrist stacked over your, wrist stacked under your shoulders. If that feels too intense on your wrist, you might take your hands slightly forward, so you're decreasing that bend. We're gonna go through a few rounds of bird dog. So let's lift the right leg out behind us. Take the left arm forward. Pull your ribs and navel away from the floor. Inhale, lift the arm and leg, take the back bend. Exhale, knee to elbow as you round the back. Inhale to extend. Exhale to curl in. Three more times, just like that. Of course, if you're moving a little faster than I am, you may have more repetitions, that's completely okay. Last one, if you're moving at my pace. Good. Now this right leg is going to swing forward in between the hands. We'll stack our right knee over the right ankle and shift your left knee back as much as you need to to start to feel some sensation in your left hip, left hip flexor. Inhale, Anjaneyasana, low lunge. Exhale, a variation of Ardha Hanumanasana taking your arms back, peeling the toes away from the floor. Inhale, arms lift. Sorry. Inhale, arms lift. Exhale, take it back. Beautiful. <laughs> if you're finding the balance challenging, as I just did, nearly falling into the wall, press the heel down firmly when the toes are lifted. And then press the big toe down firmly as you're taking Anjaneyasana. Twice more. Last one. Good. Next time that that exhalation comes, place your hands on the floor, return back into tabletop position, and we'll do that sequence on the other side. Left leg goes back, right arm comes forward, core pulls away from the floor. Inhale to lift, exhale, knee to elbow. Inhale to lift, exhale to round. Good, three more times just like that. Drawing your navel up towards the ceiling every time you round the back, making yourself as small as possible. Last one, if you're moving at my pace. That left foot comes forward, knee over ankle. Anjaneyasana, low lunge. Ardha Hanumanasana, half splits. Beautiful. We did a total of seven here. If you're moving at my pace. Last one. And the next time that you find yourself exhaling, place both of those hands down on the floor. Take your front leg back and we'll meet up in the tabletop position once again. We're now going to take our knees about hip distance apart. We'll tuck the toes under and walk your hands forward just slightly as we pass into downward facing dog as a pose. So you might start off in your down dog with your knees bent deeply, bringing your chest towards your thighs. 
If this is good, stay here or play around with straightening the legs, maybe pedaling them out. Enjoy some movement for about one or two more full breath cycles. And then we're going to walk the big toes towards one another, towards the midline. Inhale to lift that right leg up. And then as you exhale, bring your right knee towards your right elbow and stack your shoulders over your wrist. Lower the right shin to the floor. And then start to ease your left thigh back until maybe both thighs rest on the floor. If not, grab a prop like your block and place it under your seat, under your right thigh for support. Our flow here is going to be a lifting of the chest as we inhale and a lowering of the chest as we exhale. Inhale to lift. Even if the range of motion isn't broad and sweeping, find the lifting and the lowering that's appropriate for you. Good, if you're moving at my pace, do one more here. One more nice big lift. One more lower. As you lift again, tuck your back toes under. Bring your palms flat onto the mat. We're gonna lift that back knee and take the front leg back almost in a single motion. Allow yourself to reset legs and feet towards the midline. We'll inhale the left foot up this time. Exhale the left knee forward towards your left elbow. Let your right shin rest on the mat. Ease the right thigh back. Grab a prop for support if you need to. Inhale, lift the chest, mini back bend. Exhale, lower. Inhale to lift. And exhale it down. Good, three more just like this. Press the ball of the back foot down into the mat, helping to square off the hips. Good, last time if you're moving at my pace, inhaling up for the last time, exhaling into the fold for the last time. When you inhale, make sure those back toes are tucked under your palms are flat on the mat, return to downward facing dog. Good, go ahead and wag your tail from left to right. Twice more on each side. And the next time an exhalation comes around, bend the knees, lower back into a tabletop position. We're going to take the knees a little bit wider than the hips and let your big toes touch behind you. And then sink it back into a child's pose, sitting your sit bones onto your heels, crawling your straight arms forward, and letting your forehead rest onto the mat. One full breath in child's pose. And then we're going to shift forward, stacking shoulders over wrist. Curl your heels in towards your glutes and let your hips drop. Good. Exhale, take it back to child's pose. And then Kappa, sorry, Raja Kapotasana. I'm working on using the Sanskrit more often in my class because it started losing it just from a lack of use, right? So getting back into honoring the roots in the practice, getting back into the Sanskrit, definitely making some bumbles along the way, but that's learning, that's life. Take it twice more here, shoulders over wrist, toes towards the back. Sink it into child's pose, nice long spine. Last one. Good, exhale it back. As you come into tabletop, 
We are now going to move in and out of Lolasana, starting from plank position. A few notes for success in this transition. Make sure that your fingers are spread nice and wide to give you a good base and your index fingers are forward. Step your feet back into plank. And then as you exhale, take your right foot forward, top of the right foot rests on the floor. Then do the same with the opposite leg and take it back. Now putting your knees outside of the arms gives more people more space. Putting your knees inside of the arms, less space, more core engagement. Twice more, changing the position of the shin each time. Good, knees to mat. Take your wrist, flip them so that the wrists are forward. Fingertips face the knees. Doesn't need to be perfectly 180 degrees. Just find what feels good to you. Take a few breaths here. Nice straight elbows. Good. Take the elbows forward. Make your way down onto your back, please. We're going to get into happy baby position. Drawing your knees towards your armpits and taking your hands today to the outside of your calves. Pull the legs down, encouraging your knees a little closer to the mat and even anchoring your tailbone down to the mat even though it may not touch. Take a few breaths here. Now we're going to straighten both knees, take the legs into a V shape. I'm gonna scoot away from the wall just a little. Good. Now we're gonna flow in between those two poses. So as you exhale, knees bend. Inhale, knees straighten. Exhale, knees bend. Inhale, knees straighten. Good, start to move at your own pace, finding what works for you. Straightening the legs, straightening the knees, bringing the toes towards the floor as much as you can in this reclined, wide-legged forward fold. Good, let's take it three more times if you're moving at my pace for three. Two. And one. Good, let the soles of the feet come to the floor. Take a moment to readjust your sacrum if needed so that your sacrum is fully supported by the floor. And we're actually minimizing the bend in the lower back here. Not quite sandwiched onto the floor, but maybe lengthening that lumbar spine more than normal. We're gonna bring our knees to stack over the hips and take your hands just a little bit wider than your hips with the palms facing down for support. Additionally, you can take your arms into like the shape of a T for even more support than that. We're going to let the left knee fall to the left, followed by the right knee like they're chasing each other. We'll inhale to bring the right leg up, followed by the left, and then exhale, they fall in the other position. Good, inhale. Let the legs chase each other, twisting from side to side, keeping the shoulders glued to the floor, keeping the chin straight up to the ceiling today. If you're moving a bit more slowly, you might be able to take the chin in the opposite direction of your bent knees. But if you're moving quickly, keep the chin facing straight up. Good, twice more, if you're moving at my pace. Beautiful, next time that both the knees come up to center, let the soles of the feet rest on the floor, 
and then ease the legs down heels resting on the mat hands on either side of your hips whipping the palms up and drawing the shoulder blades together we aren't quite entering shavasana yet we're going to take a few breaths to let the body kind of cool down focusing on the breathing slowing it down steadily gently and letting all the tension seep out of the body dripping into the floor beneath you this is especially true around the muscles of your face your jaw your shoulders I invite you to listen to the following mantra or repeat it after me. I allow love to flow through, in, and around me. Again, I allow love to flow through, in, and around me. Final time, I allow love to flow through, in, and around me. Let both hands come over the center of the chest, sealing that mantra into the body, into the mind, every single shell of your being. And let yourself settle in for Shavasana, allowing the tops of the hands to rest on the floor once again releasing physical tension throughout the body, letting the muscles relax, and even letting your brain relax. Welcome stillness there. And if your brain starts to wander into thoughts as it often does, gently guide it back to that stillness. And if that feels almost impossible to you, then let your mind stay on the pattern of your breath, just noticing every inhalation and every exhalation. Thank you for practicing with me. Take care.